Hello everyone, welcome back to Unity Cheat Codes. This is episode three of our platformer series. So today we're gonna talk about, well, we're gonna make a retry system. This will be very simple, it won't be anything complicated. All we're gonna do is in our players folder, make a new script called player stats or whatever you want, of course. It doesn't matter, these are just names. But if you want to follow along properly, make a player stats. So Open your editor, up in player stats, remove everything, go back into Unity, and as you can see, and you can do this yourself, you don't have to, it's just to make uh, the tutorial easier. Just move your platform to the left a little bit, make a little gap, so you can fall out. Now, on your player, drag your player stats onto your script. So just, you know, drag the script onto your player. Now, Let's go back into our script editor. We're going to go into, well, player stats, and then update. If transform.position.z, y, sorry, I've been working in Unity 3D, and use z, uh, is smaller than negative 5, then destroy game object. Now you can also do this instead of game object, but I prefer game object. It just makes it more simple for me. So all this is is, is if the player, of course there he is, if his position dot y, it's negative two right now, is lower than negative five, he will be deleted. Let's test if this works. I might have done the smaller than the wrong way around. No, it works. So now if we jump out, Oh, he's gone. He died. Very simple. Now, let's go into our game manager. We will make a public game object player. Reason I'm doing public game object player is instead of find object of tag, as if you ever make anything else tagged of player, it'll get confused. Now you can do a find object of tag player in case you're never gonna make anything else tag player. For now, I'm going to do it like this just to make it simple. I'll make a public bool, call it game is running, and by default, set to true. Now, we're going to make an update, and in our update, we're going to do if player equal to null, then game is running, equals false. All this is, is if the player returns null, game equals false. Null is just uh, a very simple way of putting it is if there's nothing there, it's going to return null. If you ever make a script and it's doing something and it's trying to call something that's not there, it's going to return null. If it tries to use a value that doesn't exist, it's going to return null. This is something in all programming languages. Basically just if the player is not there, game is running as false. So the player dies, he's not there. Now. What we're going to do is, if game is running, is equal to false. Now, another way we can actually do this is just an exclamation mark. But what we're going to do is equal to false because it's just simpler to read. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one again. Sorry about that. <laughs> and we're going to make a public game object retry button. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this, this is a, a less efficient way, but it's much simpler. This is just to make things easy. This, all these tutorials are just to make the most simple, easiest thing to understand for someone completely new. That's it. That's why I don't really go into depth of things. And that's why things aren't the most efficient, but they're, they're really easy to understand. Then retry button dot set active true so all this is is if the game isn't running if the game is false if the player died then the retry button gets set active by default we're going to go start retry button dot set active equals false let's see how this works in a second let's go back into unity on our game manager 
drag in your player. I know there's nothing to put in the retry button yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a UI canvas. Leave it as canvas, or you can change it. It's up to you. And you have the event system too. Just drag it underneath the camera. I like getting things out of the way, things you're not going to move again. Now, in your canvas, firstly, change constant pixel size here to the right to scale screen size. Now, in your canvas, make a UI button, takes mesh power. Uh, if you're not in the 2021 version, if you're in an older version, just make a normal button. Takes mesh power stuff is a little bit annoying, but the normal ones got removed. So when you do that for the first time, it'll have a few import things. Just click import and then things will work. It changes to retry button. Now, of course, in here, the text will be called text mesh pro. Well, text, text mesh pro. That's what that stands for. Now, you can rename this or you could just leave it because you're never really going to see it again. But for the tutorial, I'm just going to call it retry text. And then in the text, change it to retry, of course. Now, in your button, double click it to see where it is. Double click canvas instead. Zoom in a little bit, not too much. Change the width. Let's just say about 70. Ah, oh, it's perfect. Now go into your retry button. Let's just move it up a tiny amount. There we go. So I prefer that. That's just a little nice for me. Let's change the color. Let's change color. Uh, just come off like a a brownish color, brown orange. So now, if you press play, well, firstly, it's gonna return null for something. Just ignore this. But as you can see, pressing the button, beautiful. Let's go into our game manager, drag in the retry button. Now you'll see if we press play. Oh, there's no button. Where to go? You jump out of the screen. Oh, the button's back. As you can see, the button does nothing so far, but we're going to change that right now. So, in our retry button, we're going to make a trigger. I prefer triggers because you can do very specific things. Just trust me on that. You can do point it out is when you click down, it'll do this. Point it up is when you click down and let go, it'll do that. When a click will just be if you click like you click and let go immediately it'll do that it's just much more specific than just one little thing and this is only if you click it so that's fine for clicking a button but if you ever do anything that's moving left or right with buttons you'll want to do pointer down and pointer up anyway we're going to do pointer down and press the plus sign and then to make it simple we're just going to keep using the game manager for these things so there. Leave that as it is for now. We're going to change that immediately after this. We're going to make a function. So public void restart game. Nice. <clears throat> now we're going to do scene manager dot load scene. level one this is very very simple this is probably the most simple retry there is go back into unity on your retry button sorry about that so in your event trigger what a game manager thing is no function go into it. this is everything on your game manager as you can see there's a transform there's a game manager in here functions you can select game object which is actually the game object and then transform and then game manager so game manager is the script on the game manager and in here you'll see restart restart game ignore everything else these are just default things click on restart game so what this is is when you press the button it does this which is just and you'll see when you did this it'll import this using unity engine dot scene management and just go scene manager dot load scene level one. As you can see, our scene is called level one. Now, always remember to save a lot, by the way. That's a habit, a habit that's really good to get into. Is just press control S whenever you've done anything. Because Unity does tend to crash quite a lot. I don't want to hate on Unity, 
but for me, it's crashed a ton in the past. So now, let's replace player. And we move our player. Jump off the side and die. If you press retry. Hey, look at that. We've got a retry system. This is extremely simple. Now we can make a very... You can use that immediately, even as a beginner, to just make menus and stuff. We'll get into that another time. But it would be the exact same process. You would just make a function called load menu, and then scene manager load scene menu, and then you'd make a scene called menu. And then in there, you just do whatever you want in the menu. That's just like start, settings, all that stuff. And I know it's pointless of me getting into that right now. I just wanted to give a little example of how loading scenes work. So there you go. Now you have the most simple retry system in the game. Next video, I'll introduce some traps, spikes, platforms disappear, things like that. After that, we're going to get into actually making the game, like levels. And then you're almost done. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, please leave a like. Any feedback, any questions you might have, I'll answer them as best I can. And hope everyone has a nice day. See ya.